Empress sought him out, but he was a man who resisted fame and wealth. Zhang Sanfeng preferred to live in seclusion in the Wudang Mountains, perfecting himself as a Taoist and as an student of martial arts. But were these two disciplines really compatible? And what has been this Taoist master's legacy? Find out in Zhang Sanfeng and the Wudang Mountains, the fourth part of the series, Great Masters of the Past. The Wudang Mountains lie to the southwest of Danjiangkou City in Hubei Province. Historically, the mountains have also gone by the names Taihe and Xuanyu. These mountains are sacred to Taoism. The Wudang Mountains are commonly associated with a famous Kung Fu master, Zhang Sanfeng. And Zhang Sanfeng is in turn commonly associated with the Wudang Mountains. Over the centuries, a legend has developed around Wudang Mountains and Zhang Sanfeng. Zhang Sanfeng is described as a man with a strong physique, large ears and round eyes. His beard is said to have been in the shape of a halberd. No matter the season or weather, he always wore a tattered coat made of straw. He travelled extensively, and wherever he was seen, whether in a poverty-stricken out-of-the-way mountain village or a busy city, he was always oblivious to the people around him. The Annals of Wudang Mountains states that Zhang Sanfeng first arrived in the area sometime after the year 1368. He built a hut for himself just to the north of Jianqi Peak. A Taoist, he was a devotee of the god Emperor Chen Wu. It's often said he was heard to say that the Wudang Mountains were a place where Taoism would flourish. The fact was, though, that Taoism had been flourishing in the Wudang Mountains long before Zhang Sanfeng's arrival. Wulong Temple had been built 600 years earlier during the Tang Dynasty. The Sung and Yuan Dynasties that followed had seen the construction of several more Taoist temples in the area. During the warfare of the 14th century that marked the end of the Yuan Dynasty and beginning of the Ming Dynasty, most of the Taoist temples in the Wudang Mountains had been destroyed. The Ming Emperor Yongle, who reigned in the early years of the 15th century, 
What of the large-scale construction of temples in the Wudang Mountains? The cost is said to have been one million tails of silver. It's possible that Zhang Sanfeng's arrival in the Wudang Mountains coincided with Emperor Yongle's construction project. Inside the main hall at Zixiao Palace, there is a statue of Zhang Sanfeng seated. He seems content. His solemn expression suggests that he is an enlightened individual who is in harmony with nature. The only surviving poem ascribed to the monk Huo Long reads My Taoist name is Huo Long. I lived anonymously in the Great Void. After passing the teachings to Zhang Sanfeng, I went to a place to the east of Peng Lai Island on the sea. Peng Lai Island is a mythical land in Taoist legend. Zhang Sanfeng, who was Huo Long's chosen successor after he went to reside on the island, regarded the revival of Taoism as his lifelong mission. Foreign Empress sought him out, but he was a man who resisted fame and wealth. Zhang Sanfeng preferred to live in seclusion in the Wudang Mountains, perfecting himself as a Taoist and as an exponent of martial arts. But were these two disciplines really compatible? And what has been this Taoist master's legacy? Find out in Zhang Sanfeng and the Wudang Mountains, the fourth part of the series, Great Masters of the Past. It is said that the legendary Emperor Jen Wu cultivated himself among the Wudang Mountains to the point where he attained immortality. The Taoist temples in the Wudang Mountains are all said to have been built according to the basic layout of Emperor Jen Wu's palace. All that is, except Yu Jen Palace. Word of Zhang Sanfeng soon spread, and when Emperor Yong Le heard, he decided he would invite the monk to join him at court.
The emperor went in person to the Wudang Mountains on several occasions, but he never managed to meet Zhang Sanfeng. On one trip, though, he met an old Taoist monk and asked him where he could find Zhang Sanfeng. The old monk said, Do not try. Even if you meet him, you will not recognize him. And if he learns that you are looking for him, he will hide from you. That meeting preyed on the emperor's mind until several days later, he finally realized that the old Taoist monk was none other than Zhang Sanfeng himself. Accepting that he would never see the monk again, the emperor ordered the construction of Yu Jen Palace in the Wudang Mountains in memory of that meeting. Yu Jen Palace is also called Hui Xian Guan Hall or Meeting with the Immortal Hall. Sadly, Yu Jen Palace was later destroyed by fire. Today, all that remains of the magnificent building are a few broken bricks and tiles. Zhang Sanfeng enjoyed the favor of several Ming emperors. All of them invited him to court, and although he always declined, they conferred on him the title Taoist Master. Remarkably, it seems that Zhang Sanfeng's attitude, rather than causing the emperor's offense, actually made them respect him even more. The inscription on the tablet behind the stone turtle records that an envoy carried a message to the Wudang Mountains on behalf of Emperor Changzu of the Ming Dynasty. In it, Zhang Sanfeng was invited to the imperial court. The inscription reads, Your morality is of the noblest. None can compare with you. In your actions, you are in accordance with nature, and yet you are ingenious and enigmatic. I have little talent and learning, and I lack virtue. I send this letter to express my sincere desire that we may meet. It was the practice among scholars and Taoists in the past to live in seclusion among mountains. There, they could foster their morality and cultivate themselves, perhaps even to the point of attaining immortality. Surrounded by nature, they felt liberated from worldly cares. Zhang Sanfeng spent many years living deep among the Wudang Mountains, expounding on the principles of Taoism. For company, he had the springs, trees, rocks, wind, birds, and animals. In the tranquility of these beautiful natural surroundings, Zhang Sanfeng purified his soul. In his pursuit of the ultimate truth, he cut himself off from the affairs of the world. Zhang Sanfeng sought neither fame nor wealth. He was happy, living in seclusion, and immersing himself in Taoist philosophy. The ideas he developed would have a profound influence on Taoist ideology in later times. Zhang Sanfeng inherited the doctrine of his mentor, Chen Tuan. He said one should learn from all three major religions. 
he would become known as the great master of the three religions. In an essay on a grain of millet, he wrote, Confucianism advocates the understanding of one's destiny through learning. Buddhism advocates the obtaining of enlightenment through the understanding of oneself. Taoism holds that the three religions have the same understanding of human nature and destiny. But Zhang Sanfeng never established a philosophical school of his own, even though as an eminent Taoist monk he accepted disciples. After his death, however, he was worshipped in the Wudang Mountains and farther afield as a great master of Taoism and the founder of the Sanfeng School. Zhang Sanfeng wrote, The tree has no roots, the flower is lonely. Who would ever abandon the pursuit of illustriousness? Life is fleeting, the boat drifts on a bitter sea. There is no freedom at all. By this he meant that those who are greedy for fame and wealth are like a boat drifting on a sea full of dangers. He urged people to be aloof from fame and wealth and instead cultivate refined tastes. Zhang Sanfeng cultivated himself according to the theory promoted in the book Diagram of the Supreme Ultimate. It states that the source of the world gave birth to the Supreme Ultimate and that when the Supreme Ultimate stirred it gave birth to the five elements that formed the universe and all things in the world. In On the Great Way, Zhang Sanfeng wrote, Those who do good deeds and are kind-hearted, loyal, filial and honest will soon gain immortality. He urged people to cultivate fine virtues and perform good deeds. There are two leading schools of Chinese martial arts. They are the Shaolin Martial Arts School and the Wudang Martial Arts School. Shaolin Martial Arts was established by Bodhi Dharma, an eminent Buddhist monk from India. Zhang Sanfeng was the founder of the Wudang School. 
什么八卦圈、形意圈、太极圈、混元圈等等等等，其实这些权术都就是从道教的一些术语中的名演绎而来的。Empress sought him out, but he was a man who resisted fame and wealth. Zhang Sanfeng preferred to live in seclusion in the Wudang Mountains, perfecting himself as a Taoist and as an exponent of martial arts. But were these two disciplines really compatible? And what has been this Taoist master's legacy? Find out in Zhang Sanfeng and the Wudang Mountains, the fourth part of the series, Great Masters of the Past. Louis Cha, in his novel Seven Chivalrous Swordsmen, based the seven heroes of the title on real people: Song Yuanqiao, Yu Lianzhou, Zhang Songxi, Yu Daiyan, Zhang Tuishan, Duan Lixiang, and Mo Shanggu. Were all outstanding exponents of martial arts, and all of them were taught by Zhang Sanfeng. In response to an edict from Emperor Yongle, 400 Taoist monks were selected to learn martial arts. They were taught the skills developed by Zhang Sanfeng. With time, they established a new school of martial arts, the Wu Dang School, which would become highly respected among Kung Fu practitioners. Style known as Nei Jia Chuan or Internal Fist is widely regarded as an effective way of strengthening one's internal strength. Practitioners regard Zhang Sanfeng as their great master. The movements in Nei Jia Chuan are steady and conservative, but they're also very powerful. A practitioner is taught to maintain a tranquil mind and strictly coordinate his thinking, breathing, and strength. In combat, the guiding principles are to deal hard blows with soft movements, to curb action with inaction. These characteristics are compatible with the Taoist principle of the three treasures to be cultivated. To cultivate the vital energy by refining the energy, to cultivate drive by refining the energy, and to return to the void by refining the force. It's widely accepted that Zhang Sanfeng succeeded in adapting Taoist techniques to improving health. These techniques included guiding the flow of energy and exhaling the old and inhaling the new. According to experts, the internal exercises used in Kung Fu are based on the traditional Taoist philosophical principles for building up one's health. Today, 
Zhang Sanfeng is acclaimed as the founder of the Wudan School of Taoism. Zhang Sanfeng advocated the integration of China's three main religions, stressed the importance of exercise in improving the health, and taught the internal exercises for Kung Fu. Zhang Sanfeng was such an elusive figure that everyone from the emperor and his ministers down to the ordinary people wanted to know what he looked like. Emperor Wan Li of the Ming Dynasty even dispatched envoys to seek him out, but they too failed to find him. Still, Zhang Sanfeng left for future generations a rich legacy that includes his teachings on mental cultivation, Wudang Kung Fu, and Neijia Chuan exercises for strengthening health. Xu Xiaoke was one of the greatest travelers that China has ever produced. Yet he was no casual tourist. His surviving diaries contain detailed accounts of his observations of people, geography, and geology. He visited Mount Huangshan twice. So, what was it about the mountain that most impressed him? Find out in Xu Xiaoke and Mount Huangshan, Part Five of the series, Great Masters of the Past.